Hello, my name is Lori Holsmoyer, and I'm a retired employee from the Washington State Department of Ecology and a volunteer. I care about you and your future, even though I haven't met you yet. And I've adopted this saying in my life, knowledge is power and attitude is everything. Today we're gonna to ask you what you think about money and what you want to know about money. We'll work our way up to talking about different kinds of accounts and what you might need to open one. We want to invite you to develop your own personal money strategy. And in just a minute, the presenter is going to pause the presentation and run an exercise to explore what you think about money. You might think about some of the questions that are on the slide. What is money? What do you think of it? Do you like it? Is it good or bad? Why do we need it? How do you get it? Once you get money, what can you do with it? So I'll queue up the next slide and your presenter can start the timer or they'll pause the presentation and I'll be back once you're done with the discussion. See you later. Okay, I'm back. How did that exercise go for you? Did you notice any similarities between how you think about money and how your colleagues think about money? Do you notice any differences? Did you get some new ideas? Or see money in a different way, from a different perspective? Because there are many ways to think about money as there are people. To live in this world, you're going to need money. So let's talk about how you get money. Maybe you're lucky and have rich relatives. Or maybe when you turn 21, you'll win the lottery. Or maybe you'll just save up all the birthday money your aunts, uncles, and grandma sent you, and you'll invest it. More than likely, you'll be like most of us, though, and have to earn it. That's a whole other subject that you're going to explore later in the year with your teacher. You will find you will need bags of money in your lifetime. So it's worth spending some time learning how it works. What will you do with yours once you get it? How much of it should you save? Where do you want to spend it? On a car or something else? Could you share it with others? Give it to people or organizations that you care about that make the world a better place? So once you've got some money, how will you access it, protect it, and keep it safe? How do you keep it safe now? Do you keep it in your sock drawer, your wallet? Or will you put it in a bank or credit union? If you put it in a bank, how will you get it out when you need it? There are all sorts of ways you can carry money around without actually carrying cash or be able to access your money nowadays. There's mobile apps and prepaid cash cards, to just name a couple. You'll probably hear commercials or other advice from financial experts who'll say, make your money work for you or pay yourself first. Someday you might be able to invest it in, in a business or start one of your own and get into the stock market. So there's lots to think about. But first, we'll talk about different kinds of accounts and what you need to know to open an account now. Maybe you already have an account. Maybe your grandparents or parents opened an account for you. There's many options, but we'll just explore first things first. The kind of account you get will depend on how you want to access and distribute it. Do you want to pay people or your bills without using cash? Do you need to send people money in the mail? Are you interested in paying your bills online? And most of those programs have a way to provide a record for you. But if you do want confirmation that someone received your money and cashed your check, you might want to open a checking account. I suggest you check out bank's mobile apps. Can you see your balance easily or transfer funds? Will this balance earn interest? Another important question again. Be sure you know what fees apply to these accounts that you're thinking about and what conditions you must meet to stay in their good graces. So I visited three local banks and did a quick internet search to find out what's usually required to open an account. Most banks require you bring your ID, your social security number, and an adult to open an account with you. This adult is the custodian of your money and has access to it too. Double check when you find a bank that you want to do business with and be clear on what you need to bring with you to open your account. Before long though, you won't need an adult to open an account with you. It'll be all yours and you wanna be ready for that day. 
There are certain things you need to know and do to maintain your account. Uh, pay attention to whether or not you'll earn interest. And again, read the fine print. And I invite you to check these things out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Learn all you can about how money works because it's not too early to start thinking about it. Good sources to check out are the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or FDIC documents. I like their Money Smart for Young Adults training modules. Your teacher or presenter may have some handouts for you. Do you have any questions? Write down your questions about money when you think about them. Let your teacher or mentor know what you want information about. If they can, they'll get that information for you and bring it back to you. So here's a bonus question for you. What's the difference between the bank and a credit union? Check that out and we can talk more about it later. Hello there, I'm back. Let's review and see what questions you have. Your teacher or mentor can see about getting those answers, so keep asking them. After we go over what we talked about earlier, we'll cover some basic budgeting options and talk about debt, as well as building a credit history and your credit score. The last time we met, we invited you to really think about money. We talked a little about different kinds of accounts and ways to access your money, interest rates, and info you'll likely need to open an account. So now let's talk about budgeting. In this slide here, it says three steps to building a budget. Keep track of your spending, identify your income and expenses, analyze cash flow and look for ways to increase your income and decrease expenses. Simple, right? But it's, of course it's not that simple. Budgeting is much more complex than just these three steps are implying. But budgeting is a topic that will never get old because you'll always need to have a handle on how much money you have and where you're spending it and what you're spending it on. You'll also want to track how much you've saved and how close you're getting to your goals. This slide on financial tools has kind of a lot on it, but I'm going to direct your attention to just three of these items. Create a budget, track your spending, and pay off debt. When you're imagining living on your own someday, it might be hard to think about what, how much money you're going to need. But most of us can guess at it, though. There's rent. You've got to have a roof over your head. There's utilities, the power and lights and maybe cable, and your phone bill. So f the phone bill can be a big one nowadays, right? Uh, most of us have these smartphones and can buy things on our phones. Savings, don't forget savings. And if you have a car, you have to pay for a payment perhaps, or at least putting gas in it or insurance and maintenance of it. So uh, if you also take on a pet, there's food for the for the cat and shots and vet bills. And then how much money can you afford to spend on entertainment every month to go to a movie or buy a new game? So in the next section, we'll talk about debt or buying things on credit. So why do you need credit? Shouldn't you just pay as you go? Live within your means? That's a great strategy. In the modern world, you'll probably want to get a loan someday. Maybe get credit cards, student loan, car, phone, maybe someday a house. But be sure you know how much they're charging you for interest to loan you that money. The fees and the interest could be high. So managing debt, is it just as simple as paying the bills? So if you decide to borrow money, I can't stress enough how important it is for you to know what you're in for or when you accumulate debt. So many people, young and old, get in over their head at some point during their lives and it can cause some big problems. Talk to the adults in your life, see what they say about debt and if it was a burden at one time or another or limited things that they could do. I bet you get a variety of answers. To save up or borrow money, that's the question. There are pros and cons and different consequences for each choice. Know that borrowing money will cost you. You'll pay interest on what you've borrowed or buy on credit cards. Borrowing money costs you in interest and perhaps extra finance charges. And ultimately, that TV you bought will cost you more, and sometimes a lot more, than what you originally paid for it. Then there's the opportunity cost. If you buy something now, you can't buy something else in the future. When you apply for a loan or charge account, the company will look at your income and other things. They want to know if you have the means to pay them back. They want to verify that you're stable and reliable. 
A good indicator of future performance is often your past performance. So if you have some debt out there already, how are you handling that? Do you make your payments on time, every time? How much debt do you have out there? You might see them talk about evaluating your debt to income ratio, and that is just what it sounds like, a measure comparing your total debt to your income and credit score. They have guidelines on how to evaluate how much debt you already have out there. They're trying to decide if you're a good risk to pay them back. So, but don't worry, we all go through this every time we want to borrow money. Your credit reports and scores are used to evaluate how much credit you have in the past, how many credit accounts you have, and whether you've had any late payments or worse, because it'll for sure hurt your credit score if you miss payments frequently. Did you know that whether you pay your bills on time can affect whether you can get another loan, how much you pay for a car or other insurance, and even whether or not you might be considered for certain jobs? So about now, you might be wondering, maybe I'll just save up and pay cash. Good idea. However, someday you'll probably want to move out of the house and buy a car, and your credit score can influence rates you pay and whether you'll need a big deposit for them to turn on the power at that new apartment. Or maybe you'll want to get your own cell phone plan, and they'll be looking at your credit score for that too. So if you don't have any credit history, you could be considered credit invisible and that means some of these things could be harder to get. So as soon as you've been out there for a while, find out your credit score and what's on your credit report. So to summarize, think about money and develop your own personal money strategy. Figure out how much you'll need to pay for things. You might check out some money management software, pay yourself first, make savings a priority, find out what accounts are out there and what you'll need to open one, and know what the interest rates are and whether you'll be paid interest on your money. For a loan, how much interest will they charge you and are there other fees? Be very cautious borrowing money. Don't take on any debt that you can't pay back because it'll affect your credit. And that's it. And after all that, I hope you have questions. Knowledge is power and attitude is everything. Thank you.